Hi there. The last video I did, I showed you how I create these fabric clusters for junk journaling or, you know, for tabs on journals or um, accent clusters for the front of a page or a cover or I think I forgot to mention you can even use them as patches on your clothing even. Some of these would be no good on your clothing because they're not colour fast. But a lot of them are and if you use quilting fabrics or you know colour fast fabrics that you know are going to hold the dye you'll be fine. But as I mentioned on the last one a lot of the ones I've done here are not so colour fast. So I did these, I've, I've stitched these pieces together since the last video and what I thought I'd do this time is show you how I do, how I add the, yeah, it's not going to pick up. Now I add these paper cutouts. Having a bit of trouble because I've got metallic paint on these and you can see here it's just reflecting quite a bit in this light. This one's a bit better. This one's ink and not paint. That's why we're getting we're not getting as much reflection, but there is a, some nice blue shimmer in there that looks purple with the purple background. This one's paint again, so it's going to throw back that. So I thought today I'd just show you how I add the the paper cutouts. Now, of course, you don't have to do hearts. The hearts are just one of my favourite go-to shapes to do. I've got a jar of hearts here that I do when I just can't get back into the creative mojo sometimes. Or I can't, I'm stuck getting back into painting. I'll just sit down and paint a heap of hearts and cut them out tried to do some it's not picking the colors up well but I've tried to make some look a bit like an opal with some of these colors that's not a very opal like color so we've got all different sizes in here from you know big ones like this some that are a bit bigger to teeny this isn't the smallest one you can't really pick up there there's teeny tiny little here we go this tiny one here some of them are even smaller than that you can see some in the bottom there so how do we achieve these i'll just spray the this is just water i'm just going to spray my paint palette and Prime them a bit. I've not done this before. I usually put paint on with a paintbrush, but I thought I'd try this for a change. Um, I'll try and do. I'll try and start with a. Show you how I do an opal one, or try to do opal. It's not necessarily going to work. It's not always foolproof and I think I've been a bit too heavy handed with the um, with the pigment on the more recent ones. I'm just getting a bit of pigment in my tray here. Some of that one. 
Are you like me? I've got my favourite colours and then they always run out much quicker. And this palette is a sort of a generic palette. Very inexpensive and it's one that, as far as I'm aware, you can't buy the half pans separately, which is a bummer because these paints have turned out to be some of my favourite paints ever. From that one, that one, that one, that one. I think I've got enough colours for now. So, what I try and do for these opal effect I paint, yes my brush, my water is a bit dirty but there's a bit of method to my madness I like to see where I'm painting it because with my eyes at the moment if I don't have a bit of tint in that water I can't see what I'm doing so the first colour I try and put down is a a bit of a light blue, like a almost a denim type of blue. Oh, crap, there goes my... That fell upside down, so I've probably got paint everywhere I don't want it. Oh, it's not too bad. It's all falling outside. So, I'm just dropping some... Now, this is quite watered down at, at the moment. I don't want too much pigment like I may, I did yesterday I beat a bit more than what I've got there because that's not showing up so I'm just putting some dots of pigment I wonder if I can zoom you in a bit more I'm trying a different setting on my camera too so I'm trying to improve the quality of the image and I haven't tested it before so this is going to be a bit of a learning curve then I'll come in with a bit of this cool greeny color just a few dots here and there I'm trying to spread them out it's not working that well because I've got too much water on the page obviously then we'll go for, we'll get a bit of purple. Again, not too much pigment. Just randomly, I'm trying to make sure I bring some of that colour up to the edge quite a fair way. Because if I don't, we'll lose the shape a bit. Now I'm going to go for a bit of this pink magenta -y sort of just drop some pink in here and there I don't think I have enough pigment today Gone outside the lines there then I'm going to bring in this limey green and again just some, just drop some this is where it gets a bit tricky because this limey green tends to make it go muddy if we're not careful but it's also the secret to get it to start to look like opal I'm just trying to fill in as much of the edges as possible now the last color I use is almost an indigo it's an indigo blue I'm just dropping that in around the edges to try and fill that shape out a bit
Now I don't know if you can see up here there's a bit of an empty bit where there's no pigment so I'm just going to try and drop a bit of this indigo in there there we go that's a bit better so now that looks a bit it looks very dark doesn't it there's a lot of water sitting on top of that now I'm going to come in with my chameleon paints color shift I'm just going to pick up some of this uh, it shifts to blue this one I think and all I'm going to do is drop a little bit in the bottom here I didn't have enough on because normally when I do that it will there we go that's a bit better so I've basically just dropped a bit in each point put a bit down that side that's about it and then we wait for it to dry you can use your your dryer I guess I won't because there is a lot of a lot of liquid there and I will blow it out now that's the ones that I try and get to look like opal that was an opal but I've dropped too much indigo I've never done that one be that before drop too much indigo um, then we can do another I'm just showing you a couple of different techniques I've got a bit of glitter in this I'm still in my brush from the chameleon paint the color shift paint and then I'll just get some pick up some it's not wet enough for the color to run I'm just painting the outlines basically wet on wet with watercolour paint just drop some more pigment in and again around the edges now I like to leave a bit, I haven't left a lot, a bit of white along one side you can see here in these ones so that should do for that one. The other technique is wet on dry so I've loaded my brush with that pink again and I'm just going to come in and Now when you paint these, when you're painting your hearts or your shapes, whatever shapes you're painting, probably got too much pigment on this one. Remember to keep enough space between each shape because we're going to cut around them. And I like to leave a bit of a white border. That one's very pigmented. Let's try and water it down a bit. Still a lot of pigment in here, isn't there? And this one, you can see I'm getting, I'm a bit close to this other heart here, so that could make it interesting when it comes time to cut it out. Now, that's, what did I do? The, the opal the wet on wet the wet on dry that was a wet on wet now i want to show you what i do with the ink so these ones so this red these ones here that one two three four and then above they've all been done with ink and what I like to do is, where's my ink? The red one is 
is this ink ferris wheel press song of scarlet it has a lovely red base with a blue shimmer in it this one so the blue on the red looks purple and it's just such a beautiful this is a writing ink but i use it in my artwork a lot and again i'm going to paint in a heart shape i've gone too close to that one with my water So that's just water. This ink, because it has such a heavy shimmer in it, needs a good shake. And then I tend to really get the brush in there to try and pick up that shimmer. Now, the idea is to just drop some ink into the water. I want to try and get around that outline so what I'm trying to do basically is just show the outline of the heart I don't want necessarily want to color in and I like to come along and drop some ink down one side just loaded it up again here we go because these heavier drops are usually where the glitter sits now see this one that ink does move around quite a bit as it dries but I feel like I probably don't have to I feel like I just want to outline that edge a bit clearer I've dropped too much ink in there now. Now another way to do this, that's not, I know it's not a huge demo. I've found I've got, a lot of the hearts I've done are too big, so I'm trying to do some smaller ones. So here we go with, I'm just doing some water again. Laying down some water. I can see a bit clearer this time because it's still got some ink in it. Now this time I don't want as much ink. I'm going to try and colour this in a bit this time. Make sure I've got my shape. A little bit more ink. Might drop a bit more in one side. And it should dry, this one should dry to be like this dark, beautiful dark red with the blue glitter on top, deep rich colour. This one here it looks a bit pink, I don't know if it's picking up in the monitor the pink. Um, this one was done like that but sometimes if I'm not too heavy handed I end up with a beautiful orange colour from the, all from the one bottle of ink now I'm doing the outline and I'll fill it with water this should also give me more of an orange effect Of course, you can do 
all sorts of different shapes. You don't have to do hearts. You can do the, your hearts all different shapes. You can do whatever your little heart desires. Um, the other thing I was going to show you was probably just nothing exciting, mainly just these different these chameleon paints and I usually just go straight I don't often paint these on their own I usually use these as an overlay but I thought I'd just paint a couple and show you what they're like, what they dry like these Chameleon watercolours are some of my favourite paints. Now the other thing I wanted to show you which doesn't really have anything to do with the clusters, but I think it's worth mentioning while we're doing this. When I paint, I like to paint these on a good, like a 300 GSM watercolour paper. Because A, a lot of them are quite small. I do, I like small because I work small, I do a lot of small journals. So I work small. So I like a bit of structure there happening. And I also like to pop them in when I send off letters and cards and things. I pop some of these shapes in, whether it's hearts, leaves, rainbows, whatever it is that I do. I've got a whole box of all different things, flowers, flower pots, whatever it is. So the other thing I want to show you is I will usually get a big sheet of watercolor paper and I start painting and I might just do all hearts and you can see I've cut some off here I've got some here to be cut out I'll get to those shortly what I wanted to show you is when I when you do all your hearts like this I'll turn it around upside down and then I come along into these spaces and I paint some smaller hearts because I use the smaller ones as well and because it seems like a waste to not use these bits of paper so I try and use as much as I can I don't like to have waste if possible and again remember that we need to leave enough area around all of them to cut around them some of them I did yesterday got a bit too close. Let's try a different colour. So just some little hearts to fill in these gaps. Don't know if you can see that one. So even if they're just little, sometimes they're nothing more than a little V, really. Fill it in a little bit, round off the tops. Some of them are even smaller than that again. That's just something to be mindful of when you're painting, just fill in. And again, you don't have to do hearts. You can stick little flowers in there or little whatever you want. I mean, obviously you don't have to use these bits of paper at all, but I like to try and utilize whatever I can. So what I do then when I've got all my hearts done, a big sheet of hearts, I'll come along and I usually just cut in strips this direction but I'll just cut a corner out here 
for example. I've got wet ones in between there. I don't want to get the wet ones. So I usually just cut off strips of hearts that I've painted. There's some wet ones there, like I said. So imagine this is a strip of the hearts down one side. And then I come in and cut them up. These two are a bit close together to get my border. Cut them up and that's what this lid is full at the moment. These are just bits that I'd started to cut out. You can see there's some smaller ones here. And then when I'm ready to cut them out, I just cut around trying to leave a, a white border. For no other reason than I like the look of the white border. Now for those of you who haven't done much cutting or have trouble with cutting, there is a little trick to it that may help you if you're not aware of this trick. So when you're cutting out shapes like this, They never really taught us in preschool how to do it efficiently or well. So the little trick that can sometimes be helpful is I'm holding this shape in my non-dominant hand. I'm using my dominant hand with the scissors. The scissors are doing the cutting so I'm as I'm going around the shape, I'm simply just squeezing the scissors. But for the most part, the non-dominant hand is doing most of the work. It's turning and guiding the shape more than the scissors are. Scissors are moving a bit as well. When you get into a bit of a rhythm, you'll be moving both hands at the same time. But it's the left hand, the non-dominant hand, that does the majority of the work when you're cutting. So a lot of the times when we're at school, all those years ago, they actually either don't teach us how to do this at all, or they teach us to use the scissors, to get the scissors to do a lot of the work. They probably don't do that these days. They'll probably give much clearer instructions when cutting. But this is something that I picked up. I had a, gla a glass, a class full of adult students one day, and probably 80% of them couldn't cut out their shapes neatly. And one lady got really upset, and she thought she was just no good at all and I watched what she was doing and it took me a while to realize what was happening and she was sort of maneuvering the scissors like this and her cuts were really um what's the word um not jagged she was this movement with the scissors was not nice and smooth it was really like, I keep going to say jagged, but uh, not erratic, jarring, I suppose. She was sort of lunging with the scissors into the paper. And then when I watched some of my other students, they were all doing a very similar thing, not as dramatically. But when we sat down and realised that the hand holding the scissors 
pretty well stays quite stationary, you know, not exactly, but and all it's doing is gently squeezing the scissors. The non-dominant hand is doing the manoeuvring mainly. I mean, I'm oversimplifying this quite a bit. As I said earlier, you'll get into a rhythm. Once you get the hang of the movement and the nice smooth actions happening, you'll get into a rhythm and not even think about it anymore. So that little bit of information might be nothing new to you at all. Or it may be some, just the sort of thing that you need to help you get a nice clean cut in future. So I'll just tidy these up a little bit so we can move on to the next bit. I'll keep out, there's a little one here, I'll show you how to cut those out. It's the same principle. It's just a little bit more fiddly because they're tinier. It can be a bit of a challenge when you can't feel your fingertips sometimes. You can come in from the other direction for these points in here, but I don't like the, the look of it, so I try and keep going all in the one direction. And there's a, a smaller one. I do do smaller ones than that again. But there's another small one. And as I said, once they're cut out, they all just go into this jar. Ready for when I want to use some. So moving on to... How we get to this stage. So quite simple really. I get yesterday's video I showed you how to do these fabric clusters, how to stitch them all together. You notice this one I've left a yellow tail out the back just to give it some more character. So let's pick out one or two of these. That one might be a good one. So I've got a nice black and white and grey one. And let's have a look. Hmm. Might be a bit big on there. You go a nice big one down there, or you can look for a smaller one. Problem with this jar when it's time for looking for the colour you want, you've got to dig. I usually tip them all out. Oh, we could go a smaller one up in here. I don't mind that. Then, no, it's still too big. So I'm just thinking if I, I can use this straight on the top of a journal somewhere on a page or something, but if I want to use it as a tab, I could go like that. That's going to be, if that's going to be on a front cover, it's going to have to be more like that. And this is where sometimes I just do a whole heap of these, keep the pile of these done, keep the hearts or the other shapes done, and I don't decide what I'm going to do with these until I actually stick them on the journal or whatever I'm using them for, because I might want to stick that on the front of something. 
as it is stick that on stitch it on or I might want to use it as a folded tab but I might not know what I want to do with it until it's time to use it so you can keep your pile of stitched stacks ready and you cut out shapes ready or you can come along and get these ones prepared so let's get back to these I don't mind that one on there either but let's have a look for some more colors I want smaller ones at the moment It's a nice colour, pearlescent. Just digging for some smaller shaped hearts. This is one of the ones I tried to make look like an opal earlier. That's how they dry. If I don't put too much pigment on. Should have had some of these out ready. I didn't think it would take me so long to find some the right size. And some of these colours are beautiful. Look at that. These are ones I did from a master sheet. I'll have to show you those one day if you're interested. Some painted master sheets. Okay, we should have enough to choose from now. Look at the colours in this one. Okay, let me pick up these larger ones, put them out of the way. Okay. And you know, all the colours I do, and sometimes I can never find. <laughs> The right colour that I think in my head. That would be a good colour, but it's too big. I don't want it that big on there. They're too small. That's not too bad. What about that one? Hmm quite like that one okay so now that you've been so patient watching me choose that once again we whip out the old glue stick Now sometimes I use the, the lid of the glue stick and just, I'm just pressing it on to the fabric. Putting some force on there, make sure it's stuck on. And that's pretty much how I do them. I can't guarantee these won't fall off at a later date, but 
you can do something like this. Um, I think I'll go this colour. That's too big though. Just put a knot in the end of my thread and I'm just laying this down to work out where I want to put my next stitch. I want that one about there. I do like to try and have, if I put stitches into these, I like to try and have an odd number for no other reason than I like it. I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. That's not as slanted as I would have liked. These stitches might be a bit too big for this heart. Laying down to work out where I want to go in. About there. So I'm just trying to make stitch crosses on. Come up down here. And then lay down my thread so I know where I want to go in. About here. And then the same as this last one. If I've done this correctly, I should have two strokes and two crosses on the back. Lay it down again. Or oh, one stroke because I haven't ended this off. And there we have some stitches. And on the back, underneath all the thread, I've got one two crosses and there's the stroke where I've turned and now I'll just end that off you can leave a tail and tie the two tails together and have another dangly bit but I've already put a knot so we won't worry about that And there you have a little, little fabric a stack with a watercolour heart that's been stitched on. And you can just keep going, doing whatever you want. The heart might be a bit big. That was a good colour though. There's an opal. Oh, that's good. Let's stick that on while we remember.
Here's another one. I don't do stitches on many of them. It just depends. It depends on what look you want. It depends what you want to use them for. It depends on, you know, with this one I might come back and put a heap of little seed stitches all around on this piece of fabric here just to give it more texture like like this one got all those pink seed stitches around here this one I've used a perlate not that it matters perlate's a bit harder to use in the paper because it's thicker and you need to use a bigger needle this is three strands of um, stranded cotton uh, a lot of times I'll only use one strand I don't often like the big chunky look but the chunky look works good to fill in the cut the space quicker now coming back to this one we painted earlier that I tried to make look like opal it's still not dry I'll show you a little trick that I use if it is too wet and I want to lift some of that colour I will get what have I done with them so I get a roll of paper towel and I cut it up into little squares it's just paper towel and then just hold a corner into the wet it's dried out quite a bit so I'm not picking a lot up but if you just hold it you can lift a bit of that pigment and that wetness and help it dry a bit quicker so that's the only one that's not dry again I think it looks like I've used too much pigment on that one it should look more like like these It's still not a great example. That one's got too much glitter on it. <laughs> Just play around. There's nothing wrong with playing around. These are the ink. The ones with the ink. They're very pretty. This is one of the ones we painted with the ink earlier that's one of those these are the color shift paints down here chameleon paints this is the one that we did more water in another water one with the ink you get totally different look totally different effect so this one two three here we use the exact same ink and we've got different looks and then these ones here are the exact same ink as well that one that one they're all the same ink so hopefully that's explained how I do the little what's it called fabric clusters with paper accents uh, if you have any questions as usual please just drop them in the comments and I will try to answer them in my next video um, if you have if there's anything that you'd like me to show you that I haven't yet let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do but until next time I hope that was helpful and that you learned something today. I want to thank you for joining me as always and hopefully, I'm sorry I keep <laughs> I'm concentrating putting this together, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me.